It's time to paint your clay frog. Here is your frog out of the kiln ready to paint. You'll have a placemat to keep your frog on as you paint. You'll have a water bucket and paintbrush, a sponge to dry your paintbrush on, and temper paints. These are the same things we used for the landscape project, so you should know how to use these things properly. When you take your paintbrush out of the water, you'll dry it off on the sponge. And let's just go over the parts of a paintbrush one more time. There's the handle where your hand goes, there's the metal part, the ferrule, and the bristles. The ferrule is also called the danger zone because you should never hold your brush in the danger zone. You could get very dirty. Hold it at the handle. And you should never get paint in the danger zone because it's hard to wash off your brush and you'll mix up the paint. So always keep the paint on the bristles of the brush. There's one thing I want you all to do the same on your frog, just one thing, and that is to paint the eyeballs white and the pupils black. It's the only thing I want you all to do the same. So do that first. Eyeballs white, pupils black. Of course, when you switch colors, you need to wash off your brush thoroughly in the water. Gently, gently swirl it around. You'll rub it on the sponge to dry it off and get that extra paint off. And then that's when you can dip into a new color so that none of the colors get mixed up in the tray. So again, eyeballs white, pupils black. It's the only thing I want us all to do. Otherwise, you can do whatever you want for the rest of your frog. So I'm going to wash off my brush again, dry it on the sponge, and I'm going to paint an orange frog. I've sped up the video, but I'm painting very slow, very careful, making sure my brush has a good hair day. I'm going to hold my frog a lot in the video so you can see me paint it better. You can hold your frog as you paint it. Um, it might be easier for you to keep it on the table as you paint it, but you can turn it around and tilt it and lift it as you need. Make sure you get your paint in all those hard to reach little cracks so that there's barely any white space showing. As you paint, you're going to notice that parts of your frog will dry pretty fast. So the first things I painted, the eyes, they're already dry. That's because clay is porous, it's full of holes, and it absorbs the moisture of the paint. So you're going to notice that the paint dries pretty fast on your frog, as long as you're not doing globs of paint, which you shouldn't be anyway. Um, and that's really good for, you know, if you need to hold your frog or if you want to do a color on top of another color, um, it'll be nice that it dries pretty fast. Don't paint the very bottom of your frog, keep your name exposed so that we can always see your name. Getting the rest of my orange on here. I'm going to paint the tongue red. Again, getting in all those cracks, those hard to reach spaces really carefully. I did get a little red in my orange and because the clay dries so fast that will be really easy to cover up in a little bit. If you do get paint on your hands, remember just rub it in for now. You'll get to um, use a wipe at the end of class to wash your hands off, but as you're painting, just rub it in if you get some paint on your hands. Putting some purple spots on my frog here. And then I'm going to do a little bit of black on the inside of the mouth, just so the mouth looks a little deeper. I'm just kind of doing a few quick touch-ups. Once your frog is done, you can put your paintbrush back into the water bucket and then follow the rest of the cleanup instructions.